Hello everyone. I'm here today because I'm going to work on this car behind me. It's a 2004 Ford Mustang. Um, and I'm... It's a beautiful day. Okay, so this is what the complaint was from the person I'm working on it for. The Mustang just died. So they decided that they were going to go get a battery for it and it has no power the battery light is on and we are going to do some tests check some things see if it actually needs an alternator or not and see if we can figure out what's really going on with it and why the battery light is on and make sure everything's working good and go from there so i will take you through all that all right, so this is the 04 Mustang. Um, it looks like it's got a pretty new alternator on it. Um, not even 100% sure. I'd have to maybe look up that part number or something and see if I could compare to where it's from. I'm gonna get in this thing and start it up. So that we can see if that battery light is on. Sorry, I'm... So it looks like the battery light is still on. So I'm gonna check and see if the car even has a charge on it with my voltmeter from the alternator. So this is obviously a two-person or two-hand job. <laughs> that sounded terrible. <laughs> Excuse my remarks. Alright, so the way you check this is you put it on volts while the car is running pick your volt meter probes and it's got 11.8 kind of hard to see that yeah. 11.8 is what it's at but it should have 12 and above Actually, I think it's supposed to be 14. That's what it's supposed to be. So either the alternator is not working, or I'm having issues with my cables. And uh, you know, look, this cable is not very tight at all. That doesn't help anything. And that cable is loose as hell too. So I'm going to try tightening up all that and go from there. Okay, so. This battery is sitting kind of funny if you, well, you probably won't be able to see actually. I don't even have a flashlight on me, but it's sitting kind of lopsided. It's not flat because on this back side here, the battery is not under the holding lip, but it is on this side. So I need to take this eight millimeter socket out and make it so that the battery sits right and then once that's better then I will figure out those cables and go from there well I'll tighten up the cables and then we'll go from there so the battery is being held on by this block and this really long screw with an eight millimeter top on it. And it sits like that down inside there, right into that hole. And it holds the battery in place. And it wasn't fitting all the way 
down and into the holding lip on the battery tray on this side over here. So I took this out, put it into the holding lip so now the battery is sitting flat. And I'm going to stick this back in right down here on the front side of the battery. And then I'll start working on tightening up those cables and go from there. Alright, so like I said, I got the battery nice and flat and it's mounted right. Whoever put these battery cables on, this is a brand new battery from AutoZone. It's one of the Duralast brands, which they're pretty good batteries. I don't ever really seem to have a problem with them. But whoever put this on made this part of the mount here really nice and tight. These are half inch fitting, uh, half inch nuts. And these are nice and tight. But these cables where these wing nuts are the wing nut feels tight but that cable is super loose it's not supposed to move that much and it's like that on both sides like this ground side is even worse and then I don't really love that obviously this electrical tape is falling apart and not really sealing up that wire so I'm going to see if I can tighten these up. I might have to take them off, clean them up, maybe put a washer on them to give them more pressure because these already feel super tight. And I'll try that and then go from there. Alright, so the battery cables are off. I'm going to clean up these terminals and the ends of the cables on both positive and negative side and then I'm gonna put it all back together maybe add a washer to both of these to give it a little bit more of a grab and make sure that these wing nuts tighten up if they don't tighten up like I want them to then I'll change them out for some hex head nuts and then we'll turn the car back on and make sure that it's charging and if it's not charging then we'll move on to bench testing the alternator. Even though that thing looks brand new, it might be just shot. We'll go from here. Okay, so I cleaned them up. I got some battery uh, grease on it. I'm going to put these wash washers on. And then I'm going to put the cables on. And I'm going to use the wing nuts. And I'm hoping that that cable will... I'm actually hoping that the washer will raise that up a little bit so that it, when it presses it down it'll actually tighten it up so I think I didn't have an, there was too much space between and as I tightened it it just got too tight and it wouldn't stay tight on the cable so that's what I'm doing now and then we'll check it to see if it's charging and we'll go from there um, I just put new electrical tape on those ends of the cable because they were kind of falling apart and they weren't very tight and how I am out of heat shrink at least ones that are big enough for these size cables so we're going to try that alright so the cable mount for the battery on the positive side was no good it was not tightening up and once I tried to get this tight this got loose so I just got a new one for the positive side the one on the negative side is good so we'll start it up and see what we do next okay so I 
cleaned up the cables on the battery. I changed out the positive battery terminal because it wasn't getting tight or staying tight. And basically it wasn't doing what I wanted to do. After starting it, the battery light obviously, you can see, is still on. And I checked it with the voltmeter as it's running and it's not charging. It's still at 11.8 volts and it's supposed to be above 13. Sometimes I see them as high as 14.2 or 13.8. And so we are going to have to take off the alternator and bench test it and make sure the alternator isn't our problem. If the alternator passes, then we're going to have to look into some cables being our issue and go from there. So here in just a minute we'll start taking off the alternator. Okay, to change the alternator on this 2004 Ford Mustang, I need to take off the battery terminal positive side and then take off the belt and you can do that with this tensioner here and then remove these four mounting bolts and take off this wire and this wire and then we'll go down and get it bench tested alright so this is a 3 8 drive and I stick it on the tensioner and this is just a short little stubby and I take the pipe that I have to use as a breaker bar and I just pull it this way and then I take the belt off of this pulley and then off of the alternator. It's going to be kind of tricky. I'm going to try to do it without setting the camera up, without dropping the camera or something. We'll see. <laughs> Anyways, good luck with that, hopefully. So basically just slip it off of there and slip it off of the alternator over here. Just like that. And then we release the tension and that's how that looks. You don't have to take the belt off all the way. You just have to remove it f that far just to get the alternator off. And then these are 10 millimeters. That's a 12 millimeter. And then that's just a push on clip. So I'll get that stuff off and we'll go from there. So I don't have like, I have some air tools, but I don't have anything fancy. I don't use a lot of power tools or battery operated ones. I am getting to the point where I would like to start buying some of those but for now I just do it the slow old man way <laughs> and so I'm loosening these bolts I do have to remove this hose off of the intake to get to that fourth one because the hose is kind of in the way but you should be able to just pull it back like that and it's out of the way. Just kind of stick it somewhere so it's not in your way to get to this fourth one. Just like that. And then I'll take these off. And I also have one bolt down here and one bolt down here. And those are also 10 millimeter. Sorry the neighbors are barking, or their dogs are. And you get these four bolts off. This bracket just comes up out of the way. Set it off to the side. Then I take a like a ratcheting. See if I can get it in there and you can actually see what I'm doing. Because I am terrible with the camera. And I'm trying to this to work so that you guys can see 
Okay, it's on there, but my problem is, is that my wrench is stuck on that bolt. So I gotta get it in the right spot. There we go. And then you just break them free. If they're too hard to get, because this is kind of a, a short, stubby wrench, it's not very long. Because it's kind of hard to give it some extra. A short, stubby wrench doesn't give you a lot of uh, leverage to break that nut free. So I just add another wrench to the end, like that. And of course, you could always try to set like a socket set in there with a breaker bar. But do this one and then the one on this side and then we'll go get this thing tested okay so you don't actually have to take this bolt and that bolt out all the way you just loosen them up and this whole thing lifts right out which is super awesome I still got to take these two cables off and then we'll take it over and get it bench tested All right, so this is the back of the alternator on the 2004 Ford Mustang. This is a 10 millimeter nut that goes on this positive post from the battery. And then, and I thought, I thought the nut that went right there was actually a 12 and I was wrong, it's a 10. Um, and then this, so this is the battery that goes, the battery cable here. And that goes on there like that. There's also another nut here, but I just took it off the backside like that after removing the nut. And then this cable is just a, a push connect like almost every single one. And if it doesn't come out very good, then what you want to do is push on this with a screwdriver, flat blade, and then wiggle it. Don't pull on the wires. Try to pull on the housing. Pulling on the wires can make the connection loose and give you a lot of problems down the road. All right, so this is off. We're gonna go to AutoZone and we're going to bench test this thing and see if it's bad or good. Um, Thanks for watching so far. I'll be back. Okay, so I um, went and tested the old alternator at AutoZone and it failed. It didn't even come close to uh, passing. So I bought this new one. Um, it's actually a rebuild. So I'm gonna put it on and we're going to there we go Put it on, get everything hooked up on it, and after we're done doing all that, we'll start the vehicle and make sure that it actually is charging the system this time. And we will go from there. So basically, putting it back together is the same procedure as taking it apart. Basically, you just do all the same stuff, just backwards. So I'm going to start putting this all back together, and then I'll get back with you. And don't forget your brackets. Oh, I dropped something. I drop 
this little thing and it goes on the back here you want to make sure you do that all right so I got the bracket back on the wires are back on these bolts on the bottom of the alternator are on and tight everything's tight I didn't torque them you just kind of make them tight feel it you don't want to over tighten them just make sure that they're snug and then do like another half turn after that maybe a full turn at the most then you put the bat the belt back on with your breaker bar 3 8 drive sticks it right in that hole right there pull it to the right and then put your belt back on here make sure you put it back on how we took you know basically the opposite of how we took it off all right now that that is all on belts on and everything we're gonna put the battery cables back on and then start it up Okay, I got this cable back on nice and tight. Double checking everything here that I got that all on and it's nice and tight. All my wires are hooked up. Looking it over, I forgot to do this, but it's super simple. And that's why you always wanna double check everything, you know, put this hose back on and if it'll go. <laughs> There we go that's on and now we're gonna try starting it make sure the battery light goes off on the dash and double check to make sure the battery is charging kind of hard to see uh, all right no battery light had to cover up the Sun so you could actually see that the light wasn't even on on the dash now we're going to go out and check to make sure we're getting the charging voltage with the voltmeter that we want Positive side, negative side, 14.3, it's charging nicely, awesome. Well, there she is, the hood's down because it's fixed. 2004 Ford Mustang, that's how you change out the alternator when it's not charging the battery. Thanks for sticking with me through this video and if you like what I did, subscribe if you have any comments. Go ahead and comment, give me your opinions and your thoughts. You guys probably knew of a better way or an easier way or maybe you noticed I did something that I should have done better which is totally fine and I will see you guys on the next video and definitely hit the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. Thank you. Have a great day.